Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we're going to be having another look at Frog's RAM project that we actually looked at recently. However, there have been a lot of changes made to this truck, including the addition of what you see on the right here, which is a 6x6 variant. Now, the 6x6 variant features a lot of the same upgrades and equipment as the 4x4. However, obviously, it has the addition of that extra rear axle, as well as a lengthened bed, and a couple of changes to the tune, but nothing too crazy. Now, I cannot wait to see how these perform and how the 6x6 compares to the 4x4, but the 4x4 actually also got some upgrades as well, which I know for a fact that I want to show you guys. Now, for one, the 4x4 now has a full color palette, and so does the 6x6, but I've just got them in a couple of different colors right now just to kind of show uh, the variety. And I really do love the way the 4x4 looks in red. I think it looks perfect. Um, and by the way, also on my last video about this truck, somebody actually pointed out that the uh, that the bedsides specifically, and as well as these particular RAM boxes and the winch in the factory bumper, all lead to this being a power wagon. Although the only thing about that is that if this was a power wagon, it wouldn't have come with a diesel from the factory. So it's kind of a weird like mixture of power wagon parts and diesel 2500 parts. So it's kind of an odd mixture of the two kind of thereof. But with that being said, let's actually make sure we are in the 4x4. And we're going to go ahead and get out of free cam and we're going to drive the 4x4 into the garage. And I'm going to show you guys some of the new features. And then we're going to go ahead and take it out into some testing. Now, the 4x4, obviously, like I said before, has a full color palette now. And we're going to go with the performance tune. We're going to go with the off-road gearbox. We've got the lifted toe suspension on it right now. But I think I'm going to go ahead and put the Flexi Boy on it just for testing purposes. And I'm going to go with a 45 because I believe the 45 is about the same height as the max allowable on the 6x6. So that should be just about right. Now, here we are back outside again with our Flexi Boy suspension set up ready to go. And as you can see, we also have the uh, the fifth wheel hitch in there. We don't necessarily need it per se, but I'm going to kind of keep it in there for now just in case we decide to do anything else with this particular version of the build. Now, we're going to go ahead and shut the 4x4 off, and we're going to swap over to the 6x6. Now, the 6x6 is currently on a uh, kind of a standard setup with the suspension. Now, even the stock suspension can be raised and lowered by using the change suspension mode button, which is actually really, really convenient. So, I'm going to go ahead and lower it down because we're about to drive it into the garage anyway and change the suspension type. So, we're going to go ahead and go for the performance engine. Gearbox is going to be off-road just like the other one. And let's see, we're going to put the Flexi Boy suspension on this one as well. And let's see, yes, okay, so the max allowable on the 6x6 is 45, whereas the max allowable on the 4x4 is 47. So a little bit bigger of a tire on the 47, but not too bad. Now, you also have the console winch and the stock winch right now, and the console winch is there because as of recording this video, this mod has not been um, approved for console yet, but you never know, it may. So, let's see, wheels, KMC L1s, that's about all you get for that, and as you can see, also, full color palette, adjustable, fire it up, and see what these two trucks can do. Now, I'm going to back this guy up real quick, and as you can see, these both have the option to tow a wide variety of trailers. However, this particular test is going to be more of a test of the truck's abilities rather than their towing capability. So, let's go ahead and put this thing in the high mode. Now, since you guys have already seen what the 4x4 can do, we're going to actually save the 4x4 for a second. And we are going to head to the mud in the 6x6. Now, the 6x6 really is an absolute beast in terms of capability and i already know that it's going to be a monster in the mud especially with two additional boggers over what the 4x4 has now let's try this very first obstacle real quick it's just kind of a mixture of running water and some slightly less packed ground and it just flies right through it absolutely flies right through it what about the hill climb oh my god turn that's the only thing is like compared to, wow holy crap i was feathering the throttle in high and it didn't even care it was like up we go like literally it didn't even matter it's like okay we're good so let's go ahead and throw it back into automatic mode and just kind of keep bumping the clutch to make it change up to change up to fifth and sixth gear there a little bit quicker than it would have on its own and once we get into the shallow mud i have i'm confident that i can leave it in automatic mode and it'd be fine but i'm gonna put it in high just to see wow Dude, those boggers grab like, to like nobody's business. Oh my god. Those grab like crazy. What about the first mud lane? Again, nuts. 
Now, the amount of grip it has is obviously going to be up a little bit from the 4x4, but you got to remember, you have a whole additional axle. It's not like you're going with bigger tires on a 4x4. You literally put a, another axle under this thing and added two more tires, and that will always increase your grip potential. Let's see how it does in the pond. The pond is usually what eats vehicles for breakfast, but let's see. Plunging it in there. Low plus, oh wow, low plus is actually kind of doing something. On a truck like this, I normally wouldn't expect low plus to do all that much, but this thing is actually going really, really well in low plus. I expected in here I'd have to be in like at least low, like standard low, but low plus is pulling great. Absolutely pulling great in the mud. That's wild. That's absolutely incredible. All right, we're going to park this guy here real quick. And now we're going to go ahead and actually switch to the 4x4. The 4x4, I absolutely love. You guys have seen this thing on my streams. You guys have seen this thing actually in a lot of different areas of the channel. And I really enjoy driving this truck. It's a very, very fun truck to drive. And as a lot of you guys mentioned, and as I mentioned as well or earlier, when I first reviewed this thing, I'm really glad that he added the ability to change the colors because not having the ability to change the color of the truck was really a big, not necessarily like, I wouldn't call it a letdown, but it was kind of like one of those things where I was like, oh man, I really wish we could pick the colors we wanted for this thing because, you know, the color of your vehicle is a big part of personal taste when it comes to enjoying what you drive, in my opinion. And this thing, I think now that we have that ability, it really turns it up a notch. Again, easy, easy up the hill climb. Even in high, it just really cruised right up. And I was gonna say crawled, but it more cruised than crawled. Now let's see how she does in the rocks. Now I know I didn't take the 6x6 in here, but I'm really curious to see how the 4x4 does, specifically considering the fact that it's on a crawling focused suspension right now, and I also have it in high mode. Pretty good grip on the rocks, I've gotta say. I don't like how bent up that rear coil spring looks. I'm gonna give it a quick repair just to fix that. What's funny is a lot of situations, you don't even need to have it in high mode for it. You know what I mean? High mode is cool, but like high mode, I would only really use to increase my approach and departure angles. I wouldn't necessarily feel like I needed high mode all the time. Oh my God, what a winch catch. It's all right though, don't worry about it, we're good. Don't worry about it, it's fine. All right, let's go ahead and head down this little, it's almost like a, like a miniature, like it used to be a creek bed, but it's not really a creek bed anymore but it kind of looks like there was water flowing there at one point. Who knows? Maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. Now, this thing obviously performed amazingly well in the mud when we tested it originally, but I'm gonna just give you guys a quick refresher of how good this thing is in the mud, and uh, no surprise, it's freaking great. It's absolutely freaking great. However, in conjunction with how the 6x6 did, it's actually interesting because the 6x6 does do a tiny bit better, but well, this thing actually seems to go a little bit faster, though. I feel like, at the end of the day, this thing would probably be a little bit faster in the mud, whereas the 6x6 would haul cargo better in the mud and haul trailers better in the mud. I think that's probably pretty safe to assume. So, let's go ahead and throw it back into low. And easy does it. Now, we're going to go ahead and actually switch back into the 6x6 now. And I want to see how the 6x6 does through the dips obstacle. Now, some of you may be asking yourselves, why didn't we go to a different map? And the reason why we went to this map, as opposed to one of the other very, very good um, testing maps created by the modding community, is because I tested this version originally on this map. And I really wanted to see how the 6x6 measured up in comparison on the same exact map. So now let's go ahead and start 6x6 up and head for the dips obstacle. Now, the dips obstacle is probably one of the most simple yet most interesting obstacles on this entire map, mainly because of the simple fact that there's really not many obstacles that do a better job of telling how a vehicle is going to do over varied terrain. So this thing, with the addition of that extra rear axle, should actually do very, very well through here, and it almost, it almost snakes its way uh, over these obstacles. Now, the only other thing that you have to think about is the fact that it is kind of like it's weird, you do have to think about the length of the vehicle, and when you're going through a map and traversing through varied terrain, the length will definitely start to play a role, especially when you're getting into tighter trails. But on, you know, on obstacles like this, it really helps prevent you from high centering and really also helps you always have a contact point with the ground, which is really nice. 
Now, at this point, we're actually going to go ahead and throw this thing off the bridge jump. But before we do that, we're going to do a quick repair. And then we are going to go ahead and actually swap it out for a high range seven speed gearbox the seven speed is always a favorite of mine if you're looking for speed in any of frogs rigs and this whoa ow wow i expected that to cause me a bunch of damage but it didn't so we're good <laughs> let's see if i can oh let's see if it'll make this corner wow actually it slides really really well until you well until you go off the edge of the track and then you're then you're toast but don't worry about that like i said don't worry about it right now let's see what we can do once we get all the way up to the top the camera may glitch out a little bit but that's okay and go yeah the bridge gets really glitchy with the camera but as long as you're pointed straight you're all right and go oh my it absolutely flew over the barrels it absolutely freaking flew over the barrels and that's definitely a great place to leave that truck because i'm gonna go ahead and swap over to the 4x4 variant now and we're gonna do a couple of things we're actually gonna do a separate crawling test from what we would normally do because i do want to test this thing's crawling abilities with the flexi boy suspension now because when i first did a run through of this rig it was kind of one of those things where i was like you know it's really good, but I felt like I kind of left something on the table, you know what I mean? And I definitely, whoa, don't you even think about it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm going to lower that suspension down. Change suspension mode. Even with the, like, the flexi boy suspension, there are some obstacles where you don't need it all the way up. And I feel like this is definitely one of those obstacles because as long as you approach with a great enough angle, you're going to be just fine. Let's get along and i will tell you looking at this truck in this really deep red is giving me power wagon vibes for days it's absolutely giving me mad power wagon vibes i really do enjoy it now i think at the end of the day this is going to do really really well off the bridge jump for sure but i want to know if it's going to actually fly farther than the six by six variant did because if it did i'd be like i'd be pretty pretty impressed now we've got our seven speed just make sure we got our seven speed and let's head for the bridge. And then after that, of course, we are going to send this thing up the mountain. Because I just want to see, uh, like, and how it compares to some of the other trucks that I've tried to use to climb the side of the mountain. I think this thing should be able to get pretty freaking far. Oh, my God. Turn, 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 turn. Oh, there it goes. No. Well, it's going to need one more repair. I was trying to be really smooth and drifting around that sweeper. But you know what? This thing didn't really like that. It didn't really care for it. And I'm surprised that it was actually okay with it after the issues that we had um, trying to do that same thing on the Super Truck Stadium racetrack. So, coming onto the bridge in sixth gear already. Camera freaking out. Oh, boy. I feel like I'm going faster. Oh, God. That was seventh gear. Ow. It literally landed on top of one of those posts, broke the post in half, landed on top of the barrels, and had almost no suspension damage. That was probably the weirdest display of SnowRunner physics I have ever freaking seen. Now, I am going to go ahead and head for the mountain real quick because I want to see what this thing can do when you really ask it to do some proper crawler things. And, whoa, get into the throttle. We'll try not to roll it over again. All right, let's put it in low plus and see how it does. Right off the bat, not doing too bad. I'm gonna ask for a little bit more approach angle out of it raise that suspension up although that does make it quite a bit more top heavy and i think because of that i'm gonna lower that center of gravity right the heck back down whoa oh my what this is wild i don't think i've ever had something climb that with zero winch assistance what even is that whoa that's wild. I have never had anything climb the side of that mountain with zero winch assistance whatsoever. And that is a testament to the abilities of this truck. This thing is very, very capable. And I highly recommend throwing one in your garage. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next time.